Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of Mies van der Rohe. It's a beautiful sunny fall day here in Chicago. I hope wherever you're at it's a nice day as well. Shout out to all of my students. Hope you're having a great start to the semester and we're actually almost at midterm in this crazy fall 2020 semester. Hard to believe. Today we're going to be looking at using kangaroo and we're, we're going to look at pressure. So right now you see this this icosahedron. Uh, it's actually a smoothed out version of an icosahedron and you see there's pressure and the pressure is squeezing it in and uh, we'll be looking at that and we'll be looking at how to how we can make some random anchor points for that as well. You see there's all kinds of different anchor points happening here as I as I move this number slider around. Alright, before we get into that, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please search me up on YouTube and click on the red subscribe button and then click on the bell to receive all the notifications if you're studying architecture or you're an architect and you're looking to learn about parametric modeling or complex modeling rendering in general there is something here for everybody also connect with me on Instagram at my first name Alfonso underscore my last name Peluso I'm posting a lot of my students work this past weekend I ran a half marathon it was a great day to run a half marathon it was the first race in person that I've done since uh, last October so I was pretty pumped up about that so connect with me on Instagram love to hear from you alright let's get into this let's get into this tutorial let's take all this stuff and move it down oops take all this stuff and move it down and we'll disable it as well grabbed a couple things I didn't want to there alright let's take all of this stuff and disable it alright so we'll start from scratch alright so uh, we are using kangaroo 3d so that's a plugin that you could find on food for rhino so if you were to just search kangaroo food for rhino I think I had one in there. Let's see. Food food for Rhino. Kangaroo Food for Rhino. You would find Kangaroo Physics. Uh, so you would go ahead and download the latest version of that. And then also if you did a search for Weaver Bird 3D. That's not on Food for Rhino, but it's on the maker's website, Julio. P. Centino. So you can find the latest version of that. So those are the two plugins. Kangaroo Physics is now part of the latest Grasshopper. I'm not sure if Weaverbird is, is going to eventually become a part of Grasshopper, but it may. Alright, so with Weaverbird, we're going to start with a closed mesh. So that's one of the things. It can be any, for using this pressure, it can be any mesh that you'd like it just needs to be closed so weaver birds mesh ica sahedron i'm going to start with that one all right so um scale is is really important too so we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into it so the radius of this i'm working in feet right now so i'm going to um, put in a radius of 25 feet okay so there it is so keeping in mind that it's fairly large radius of 25 feet okay so some things we're gonna have to define here the first thing that we're gonna define is we're gonna define the anchors the anchor points and we're gonna do it two ways the first way is just a real simple list item so I need a list of all the vertices so I have to deconstruct this mesh So a deconstruct mesh will give me access to all the vertices. 
Okay, so let's let's see how they're numbered because let's say I want to pick the very top and the very bottom one. I need to know what those indices are. So I need a list point list. Took me a while to figure that out for some reason. It's not it is something I use all the time, so I'm not sure why it took me a while to figure it out, but it did. All right, so I put some numbers on all of those, and I can make them larger. So let's see, maybe maybe five. It's going to be pretty big at five, but all right. No, not too bad. All right, so it looks like 0 and 11. Okay, vertices 0 and 11. I'm going to call those out. So if I want the top and the bottom ones. So I'm going to use a I'm going to use a good old panel for this. 0 enter 11 right click. Oh, I want to make this multi-line data. Maybe I got to get out of it. Yeah. Okay. So vertices 0 and 11. Let's see if this is going to work. All right. Those are highlighted 0 and 11. So that's working. And I'm going to add a not so straight line here for my kangaroo stuff. It's going to sit to the right of that. Give it a size, give it a line type, give it a color, why not? Got to have some fun, right? Okay. All right, so I'm going to add a scribble anchors how about a scribble I'll need the actual anchor one too but first I'm gonna need a scribble alright these are gonna be my anchor points okay so I'm gonna from from kangaroo under goals point I'm gonna choose anchor and we're gonna plug that in Alright, so those are going to be my anchor points. Now, closed mesh we have, we have anchors. The next thing we need are springs. Okay, so springs. We're going to need all of the mesh edges. We're going to turn we're going to turn all of the mesh edges into flexible springs. That's what allows these forms to deform and uh, it allows us to apply load or pressure or what have you. All right, so those are our mesh edges. Those are going to become springs. So let's add a scribble. These are going to become springs. OK, so the springs, those are going to be under goals line. And we're going to choose length line. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. All right, there are no naked edges. If I was to plug that in, it would be it would be yellow because these are all congruent edges. They all share an edge, so they're just interior edges. There's no naked edges in this case. Okay, those are my springs, and we'll get back to adjusting the length and the line of this because that is important, especially when we're using pressure. All right, we have springs, we have anchor points. We're going to need that l that load now, that load that equals pressure. We're going to need that. Okay, so add my scribble. All right, we're going to add a load. Okay, and this load is going to be pressure. Where is it? Let's try goals. Oh, I'm bombing out here. So let's try goals mesh. There it is. Goals mesh. And we have pressure. All right, let's drop that one in there. Goals mesh, we have pressure. All right, fantastic. So the mesh that we're applying the pressure to is our icosahedron. Plug that in. OK, so strength. I'm going to add a really low number for this because of the size. And it's funny that when I was working with smaller meshes, I needed a larger pressure. So this load is really important, something you have to get just right. So we'll, uh, 
We'll experiment. That's a little too low, I'd say. How about 0 0.005 just to start with? 0 0.005. Okay, I'll plug that into my strength. Now what you saw was a negative load that was pushing it, was squeezing it inward. This is going to blow it up outward, so we'll look at both of those. All right, so now I just need a I need a show container that shows the resulting mesh. Add a scribble for that. I keep forgetting to add the show to my outline, but uh, it makes it in the video. So show mesh. Okay, and the mesh that I'm showing is the icosahedra. All right. All right, we're going to plug these all into a merge. These are what are called our goal objects for Kangaroo. So we'll plug these in. This always adds an extra data. I can always go in and minus that out. Okay, so we're going to use a bouncy solver. Plug these into our goal objects. I'm going to make a reset button so I can start to see what's happening here okay not much is happening at the moment alright and coming out of this I want a list item with just my mesh and it's list item you see there it's the first item just under 53 locally defined values mesh v12 which stands for vertices 12 and faces 20 that's the first one on the list so I'm going to add a list item. Since the since it's the first one in the list, I won't need to plug in zero to the indice. That'll just be the the default. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. So let's select that. I'm selecting just that by going up here to the half green, half white cylinder. And I'm seeing just that because I want I want to know what's happening here okay so not much is happening so let's add some more let's see if we add some more pressure let's get this let's get this about let's say between point zero zero five or let's say point zero 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 less than twenty five point five 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 let's let that be our number slider I want to try to see this thing at least blow up. It might it might explode, might blow up. Got to get the right pressure on this thing. Okay, so now I at least see it's disappearing. So that means there must be too much too much load on it. So let's lower this down. Let's actually move the button near this. Okay. And let's get that. All right. So we'll lower this down. Like I said, this is the most important part, is just getting this. There, there we see it blowing up. So a little bit lower, I'm hoping. There we go. All right, so that took a little time. you got to be patient there. Do exactly what I did, just trying to find the right load range. So you see this thing is blowing up, and those two vertices are sitting still. All right, let's get this looking a little nicer before we move on. Okay, then we're going to come back and explain some things and do some more things. And Okay, so this, I'm just drawing a not, another not-so-straight line. I should, as I started to do it, I thought to myself, why aren't you copying and pasting the other one? I don't know, maybe because I want to have fun. <laughs> All right. All right, this is going to be now I'm going to do some weaver bird. So this is this here is where we were doing our kangaroo. Make that a little bit bigger. I tell you, I have a lot of fun with grasshopper. It's just it really is a lot of fun to work in this software. I don't know what it is about it, but it, it just never, never gets boring. All right, 
I don't know if it's because there's so many plugins or just I think it uh, has a lot to do with the workflow and this interface. I love it. All right, over to Weaverbird now. All right, so in Weaverbird, I'm going to subdivide this using a loop subdivision, which is all triangular subdivision. And I'll put a link at the end of this video to um, some Weaverbird videos so that'll go more in depth. But I want to just keep this, so I'm adding more triangles now. As you can see from here to here, more triangles, smoothing that out a little bit. And I'm going to add what's called a Weaverbird picture frame, which turns it into structure. There you go, that's the structure of it. And uh, I can control the distance of that. Right now it's a 5. I'm going to put it in a number slider 5.555. So less is more open, more is more closed. Okay, and then we're going to do a mesh thicken on that. Okay, it's a little thick to begin with. Let's let's go to 1.555. Let's plug that in. Okay, and let's do a custom preview. And we'll give this a color, color swatch. I'm going to select that and hide everything else for right now. All right, there we go. OK. All right, so now we're all set up. We're set up in Kangaroo and Weaver Bird. I'm going to save this file. Okay. All right, let's start to talk about some things. So there's our there's our mesh. Let's let's uh so now we're blowing it outward. We're blowing it up from the inside. Let's squeeze it inward with a negative. Let's look at that. Let's add a negative. Negative. So that's going to be a negative pressure. Okay, let's. It's funny. It goes in and then it blows up out. Let's add some more. Oh, I blew it up. All right, so let's talk about this a little bit. Okay, so let's go up to our springs. So our springs, they have a length and they have a strength. A length and a strength. So how long can they get before they blow up? Well, let's put a number in there. Let's, uh, let's type in 12.555 for the length. Okay. So we see what's happening there. We can push it in. So we got some adjustments here. Now the strength of it, strength by default is 10. So let's let's add another number slider there, 25.555. Now for a lot of this stuff, whoa, a lot of this stuff you got to reset it. That's awesome. Totally awesome. All right, so I'm going to lower the strength down, lower the length down a little bit. Okay. Let's reset that. All right, that's working. That's pretty awesome. That's squeezing in. Let's uh, maybe lower the load down a little bit or increase it. All right, that's working great exactly what I want. All right. So lastly, how can we manipulate the anchor points? You saw me in the beginning of this video, I was doing some random um, moving of a number slider and it was it was selecting different anchor points to to anchor the object to. Right now it's just the top and the bottom. So what I was using was a 
let's uh let's add a scribble down here and let's call this random anchor points okay so my anchor points are coming out of here coming out of my deconstruct mesh okay there's the those are there. <laughs> All right. Let's. Uh, I also want to remember that I want to. I want to pull and push and pull on these. That's going to be a lot of fun, too, to do. So, let's hopefully I'll remember to do that. Okay. So here's our random anchor points. Those are all the vertices. We're going to add a random, random reduce. Okay. There's the list. Okay, so how many do we have? We have 12. So how many do I want to reduce by? Well, I'll start by reducing by 5. Okay, and then there's a seed. I'll put in 25 for the seed. Okay. So coming out of that, there's seven points now that are becoming anchor points. Seven from the 12, and I could increase or decrease this. I can shift these around. Let's look at where those actual points are. Okay, so they're following the old icosahedron. Okay, so let's let's make these the anchor points now. So we're going to plug these into anchor points instead of those two that were the list items. So I'm going to go ahead and plug. I'm going to go ahead and plug <laughs> plug those in. Okay. So those are the new anchor points. Let me reset this. Okay. So I can shift this around and do some generative stuff. Wow. This is pretty cool. Super cool. I'm loving this. Okay, I can do that. I can um, work with the number of points that the random reduce is doing. So this is taking out less till there's none. This is this is more till there's just two left there, I believe. All right, let's go back a little bit. All right, so I mentioned that I wanted to be able to pull on some of these anchor points. All right, so let's let's look at these. Okay, so the points themselves, I'm going to plug these into a point container. Okay, so there's the, there's the points, the ones in green. Those are the anchor points. So I have those and I'm going to internalize that data. Okay, so that unplugs it. Now those points are permanently in this capsule. I'm going to plug this into target. Okay. Now I unhighlighted it. You saw me unhighlighted it and I rehighlighted it. And now I'm getting some points that I can push and pull. Super awesome. And that's going to affect my model now in real time in in Grasshopper. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you found this video helpful, let me know by giving me a thumbs up. Click on the like button. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, my head's going to pop up. Go, and, go ahead and click on subscribe. There's going to be two videos that talk more about Kangaroo and Weaver Bird. You're going to see those in the upper right and the lower right. All right, I will see you on the next one.